Once again, good morning to you all. Good morning. Good morning. All right, I asked a question and someone answered that um, last week we studied um, the leadership role of Deborah in the history of the people of Israel. Today we are moving our attention from leadership role to a new topic. So I want all of you to pay attention to what we are about to do. I'm about to introduce to you a new topic. And today, our new topic is parental responsibility. The aspect of our study today is Eli and his sons. The Bible text we will be using will be taken from 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 11 to 36. Then chapter 3, verse 2 to 18. Then chapter 4, verse 10 to 12. All right, let's move on. What are objectives? But before we move on to our objectives, let's first look at the lesson overview. In this lesson, we shall discuss parental roles. We shall examine the parental responsibility of Ellie. We'll move on to discuss the consequences of sin, of the sin of Ellie's sons on Israel. Then discuss ways in which parents can fulfill their parental obligations to their children. Lastly, we will discuss effects of bad parenting. Lesson objectives. What should you achieve at the end of the lesson? By the end of the lesson, you should be able to narrate the story of Eli and his sons. Two, identify ways by which parents can fulfill their parental obligations to their children. Then relate the lesson of Eli Relate, hold on, please. Then relate the behavior of early sons to, do, to, do, to today's youth. Identify effects of bad parenting. Lastly, derive moral lessons from the story. Now let's move on to our main agenda. First, we are going to look at, yes. I can now hear. You can now hear. Yes. All right, then welcome back online. Thank you. Great, let's continue. So the parental responsibility of Ellie is going to be the first thing we are going to discuss. And today, I will select my Bible reader to read 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 11 to 36. Then move on to read chapter 3, verse 2 to 18. Then chapter 4, verse 10 to 22. Peggy, my good reader, are you there? Yeah, yeah. You have your Bible with you? Yeah. Excellent. Kindly open to 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 11 to 36 and continue from to chapter three, then chapter four. Then let's quickly continue. Let's have an overview of what we are going to discuss from the scriptures first. Okay. All right. Then Elkanah went back home to Ramah, mm -hmm. but the boy Samuel stayed in Shiloh and served the Lord under Eli the priest. The sons of Eli were scoundrels. They paid no attention to the Lord or the regulations concerning what the priest could demand from the people. Instead, when, when anyone was offering a sacrifice, the priest's servants would come with a three 
frog for while the while the meat was still cooking he would stick the fork into the cooking pot and whatever the fork brought out belonged to the priest all the israelites would come to shiloh to offer sacrifices where to offer sacrifices were treated like this in addition even before the fat was taken off the bend the priest the priest servants would come and stay and say to the one offering the sacrifice give me some meat for the priest to roast he won't accept boiled meat from you, only raw meat. If the person answered, let us do what is right, and the burn, and the burn fat first, then take what you want. The priest's servants will say, no give it to me now for you for if you don't i will have to take it by force this sin of the sons of eli was extremely serious in the lord's sight because because they treated the offerings to the lord which was disrespect in the meantime, the boy Samuel continued to serve the Lord, wearing a sacred lime apron. Each year, his mother would make okay, a little meal okay, and okay, take put it, it there. Okay. him. It's okay. Put it there. Put it there. You are getting into the next story, so put it there. Anyway, as I said, our first. Um, objective is to discuss parental responsibility and we are going to use this bible test we just had the reader to discuss what parental responsibility is all about as far as ellie and his sons are concerned now when we say parental responsibility what comes to your mind anyone can answer when we say parental responsibility what comes to your mind Peggy. What parents are supposed to do when it comes to their children? When what parents should do or are supposed to do when it comes to their, their, their children? That is excellent. Any other person? When we say parental responsibility, what comes to into your mind? Yes, any other yeah. person? Mm -hmm. Say so the role parents are supposed to play in their children's lives. That is excellent. That is excellent. Any other person? Any other person? Say so yes. their duties needed to be performed by parents towards their children. That is excellent. That's excellent. So all put together, we are looking at parents and children relationship okay but this time we are looking at what parents must do as their roles duties responsibilities obligations in the life of their children early as we read was the priest at the time when Samuel was born before Samuel was born Samuel's mother was barren and the mother was called Hannah Hannah did not have a child for so many years and she went to the temple to pray to God and by the grace of God she brought forth a child and named her Samuel. So Samuel is not now the focus but the focus is on Ellie's children. Ellie's children were serving as priests in the temple with their father and as custom demands when worshippers come to the temple to sacrifice to the Lord, 
it is the priest who does that for them. So the priest does the sacrifice, as you can see in the slide. So this is how the sacrifice was made. There is an altar on which the animal, we, the, the animal the, the worshippers bring there are uh, slaughtered, put on the altar, and it burns the fat in the animal. And the fats, according to the custom, the fat is, and the, the burning aroma of the fat and the animal goes to God. And after the fat is burnt out from the animal, the priest can now take the animal and divide it into pieces boil it, allow it to cook before they can eat it. So when a, when a, a worshiper brings a ram or let's say a goat to be, to be sacrificed as custom demands, the priest takes it from the worshiper, kills it, and after killing it, put it on the, on the altar for it to what? To bend for God. The only portion that is for God is the fat in the animal. But the early sons, instead of them to wait for the fat to burn out to God, they will not allow the fat to totally burn. And God has demanded from them that anytime they make a sacrifice, the fat must burn out completely. But these people quickly, after they, immediately they put the animal on the fire, will take portion of the, of the meat and will not cook the meat as custom demands. So they will go and roast their own meat and eat it themselves. And according to the law of God, that was an abomination and God disliked their attitude. So what sins did they commit? They committed, they, they, they treated the, offerings of, the offering of God with contempt. In other words, they treated the offering of God with disregard. They did not respect the offering of God. Moreover, they were forcing the worshippers who come to the temple to worship. They force and take the meat from them and cook it themselves or roast it themselves. And as a priest, you're not supposed to extort from who? From the worshippers. You're not supposed to force the worshippers to do what is evil. So even though what they were doing was evil, they were also causing the, uh, the, the worshippers who come to the, to the worship center also sin against God. This sin of the young men was great in the sight of God. And they were treating the lost offering with contempt. And you can see, uh, we can see the two children of Eli over here. This is just a picture I brought here for you to follow their studies. So the question I want to ask you, if you really paid attention, what are the names of Ellie's children. What are the names of Ellie's children? From the scripture we read, can anyone quickly get it for us? The names of Ellie's children. Maybe you have, yes. Amebo. Hello, I'm Evo. All right. Maybe you found it in the scriptures, but pronouncing the name is the problem. Are they perfect? Yes. Sir Fini has. And then um and Hofni. Hofni. Hofni or Hofni is correct. Hope nine. Yeah, hope nine or hope nine. Let's okay. give her a thumb up. She has done well. She has done a great job. All right, a thumb up for you. All right, so hope nine and Phineas treated God's offering with, with contempt. They disregarded the offering of God. And this thing they did was a great sin in the sight of God. Also, aside doing this evil, hope nine and Phineas were having sexual relationship with the young women who come to the temple to serve, to serve God. There's this one, your hand is up. 
Say. Mm -hmm. Say. Please, are they the only people who were doing that? Yes, there were two, the two, the two children of Ellie. By then, Ellie had two children, Kokna and Phineas. Yes, yes. All right. Now, secondly, they were having sexual relation with the women who come to the, the temple to worship God. So you can see that what is happening today in the Lord's house had happened before. When pastors or priests of God, who are supposed to take care of God's temple and minister the word of God to people in truth and in spirit, they were misleading the people, doing evil themselves, and also causing other people to what? To sin against God. And the Lord's temple, that's, they were having this uh, um, um, Ark of Covenant in it, was a sanctuary, a place that God has sanctified a place that belongs to God, a place where they meet God, a place where they meet God, a place where they meet God. I'm meant for rejoice. Please mute yourself. A place where they meet God in prayer, make sacrifices, and the place must be... Who am I not hearing you? Who can't hear me? If you can't hear me, just go off and come back again. Let us readmit you. All right, let's move on. So these two young men did a great sin in the sight of God, treating the lost offering with contempt and also forcing, forcing the, the, the worshipers who come to, the, to, 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 to make sacrifice, take the things from them with force. They were not allowing the fat in the sacrifice bent for God. And they would, just, they would just take their portion, take it, roast it to their, satisf to their satisfaction, and then enjoy it. Also, they were having sexual relation with the women who were coming into the temple to worship. So in other words, we can say that Hophni and Phinehas were raping the women I don't believe it, 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 the, the women allowed them to sleep with them. They were forcing themselves on the women. And this was a great sin they committed and God promised to punish them. Now let's take the notes. Let's take the notes. Parental responsibility of Ellie. I'm reading, pay attention please. Ali was a priest at Shiloh. He had two sons called Hufnai and Phinehas. When Ali became old, he appointed these sons to serve as priests in Shiloh. Hufnai and Phinehas did not walk in the ways of their father. They were worthless and did not have regard for the Lord. For example, when the people of Israel offer sacrifices to the Lord, the sons of Eli would send their servants with three pronged fox to take meat from the boiling pots. They dipped the fork in the pot and any part of the meat that was brought out was sent to them. Sometimes, before the meat was burnt, the sons of Eli would demand raw meat. When they were told to wait for the fat to be burnt as a tribute to God, they would treat they, they would threaten, threaten, they were threatened to take it by force. Let's move on. The sons of Eli also slept with the women who served in the temple. In fact, yes, Savannah to fall.
Savannah to for Johannes up any problem? Savannah. Savannah Johannes, up any question? All right, let's move on. The sons of Eli also slept with the women who served in the, in, in the temple. In fact, the sins of Eli's sons were great in the sight of the Lord. When Eli heard the sins of his children and how they slept with the women in the temple, he indicated to them how unhappy he was about their actions. He rebuked them. He told them, for example, that if a man sins against God, against man, God can intercede for him. But if a man sins against God, nobody can intercede for him. The sons of Eli did not listen to their father. A man of God came to Eli to tell Eli the things that God had revealed he was going to do. But it did not change anything. For example, the man of God said, God will cut off the strength of Eli's house and that there would be no elder, there would be no elder in Eli's house. God declared that he was going to punish the house of Eli because he did not restrain his sons when they were misbehaving. This ends the first story. Now, before I continue, any question? If there's no question, then let me ask you some few questions before we continue. Anyone who wants to answer, please raise up your hand. What are the main sins of Hophni and Phinehas? Say. Yeah, they slept with women in the temple. Good. Mm -hmm. Is that all? Yes, you said them. Johannes up. Said it. They disobeyed. Yes. Say, please, they disobeyed God. They disobeyed God. How did they disobey God? Can you please explain? Um, by not. Okay. Mm -hmm. By. Um, okay, Teresa wants to help me. Teresa. Teresa, your hand is up. You want to help her? Yes, sir. Teresa, you have the floor. Yes, help her. Teresa, you have your hand is up. Teresa, you have your hand is up. God by um, forcing the people to give sacrifices and dressing them if they not give them the rest of the sacrifice. And 
sleeping with the women in the church. All right. So in a nutshell, ah, we can so the thing you're telling me, that's what people you are learning. All right. Thank you so much. So in a nutshell, we will say that they committed two great sins in the sight of God. One, they treated God's offering with contempt. In other words, they disregarded the offering of God. Two, we can also say that they had sexual relation or in other words, had sex with the women who served in the temple. Thank you for your answers. Let's move on with another question. If you have the answer, kindly raise up your hand. What did Ellie do about his children's misbehavior? Mm -hmm. You're on this app. Perfect. Your hand is up. Say he was unhappy, so he rebuked them. Okay, first, the first thing he did was he rebuked them. Okay, precious Ajoro, yes, your hand is up. Say he rebuked them by saying, if a man sins against me, if a man sins against me, Man, God can intercede, but if a man sins against God, nobody can intercede for him. Excellent, excellent. So your answers put together, you are trying to say that he rebuked them and warned them against the consequences of disobeying God's command. That is excellent. But what do you think he should have done after rebuking them? and realized that they were not changing. What were you supposed to do? When he rebuked them and they were still doing it, what was he supposed to do? Mm -hmm. Precious Johannes up, you can talk. Okay, set them, your hand is up, you can talk. Sir, so please, he's supposed to punish them. How? Um, like restriction. By giving them the chance to stop their actions. Give it a then, chance. Oh, how, should, how is he going to give the chance to them? Okay. Um, he will start them from the house of God for a period of time. Excellent. Until that, that, they should come back until they've, <laughs> they've changed, right? That's, that's an excellent point. I like the point. Okay. Yes. Perfect. Your hand was up. I saw your hands up. Yes, perfect. What did, what did you want to say? Okay, that was that one that to see. All right, then the two of you, I'm clapping for you here. You done well. All right. So, yes, Priscilla. <laughs> Priscilla, your hand is up. Hey. Yes, my dear. Hey, he's Say you restrict them from doing certain things. Okay, he was supposed to restrict them. Excellent. That's another excellent point. He was supposed to restrict them from certain duties. Mainly, since they were the people who were making the sacrifices, the best thing you should have done is to do what? To restrict them. Maybe take the position from them. Right? That should have been the best thing he, he should have Anyway, let's move, on. let's move on. Now, in your case, if you were early, aside restricting them, what would you, would you have done? I 
aside restricting the amino acid restricting the what would you have done again to make sure that such uh, behavior uh, um, stop All right, let me change the question and put it this way. Okay, Precious want to say something. Precious, your hand is up. Say, intercede on their behalf from God to forgive their sins. That is excellent. That is excellent. He's supposed to pray to God and ask God for direction, what he's supposed to do. And pray and ask for forgiveness of sins on their behalf. That is, that is excellent. I like your answer. Now, in your case, as children, you have parents in the house. When your parents assign you to a role to perform, and you refuse, and, and you, you refuse to do it, how would you want your parent to handle you? Or what appropriate punishment do you think your parents should give to you? Perfect, your hand is up. Say, they should just leave me like, they shouldn't mind me for some time so that I'll be free small, then I'll come back to my senses. They should leave you for some time. Then you come back to your senses. Okay, that is your, your, your point. Any other person? Yes, say, like. <laughs> Any other person? All right, Priscilla, as ugly, your hand is up. I love Say, you. Mm -hmm. Priscilla, your hand is up. Say, you can also pray to God. Say, I'm answering. Okay, so talk. I'm listening. So I said that he can also pray to God for. I said we can also pray to God for God to show him a way to, um, like, how to lead the children to stop sinning. Okay, okay. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for the answer. But right now, we are looking at you as a child. Say. Yes. Rosemond. Say. Yes, I'm listening. What they will do is that the road they have given to the child, they should like take that position. The child will not perform that role again as yes. a punishment. Yes, thank you so much for your for your answer. What I mean now the question has changed. Now the question is now directing to you as a child in the house or as a student in the school. When you are given an assignment or you are given a role to perform and you fail to do it, what appropriate punishment should be given to you in your, in your terms? Elsie. Hmm. Yeah, I think that I should be severely penalized so that I'll learn from my mistake so that i will not repeat it again okay what are some of the forms of punishment that you should be given say mm -hmm. corporal punishment example yes peggy um um personally i think uh maybe they should minimize the freedom i have at home okay that that is another appropriate punishment excellent any other person that was your hand is up so they can like they can also scold me okay that's another punishment any other thing Priscilla, your hand is up again. 
Then they can also help me with K. Okay, Sika, do you your, your, your point? Uh, please, that's what I wanted to say. Okay, thank you so much. All right, thank you, all of you. Okay, Evarista, your hand is up. So it's also uh, the children can be grounded. They can be what? Why them from doing certain things they like? That, that was what SLC said. Certain privileges should be taken from you. All right. Um, I think the answers you've given, thank you so much for your answers. I'm trying to find out from you whether you believe in punishment. Is punishment good? Another question I must is punishment good? For, you have let me believe that when you do something wrong, you must be punished. So is punishment a good thing? Say. Yes. Say. Yes. In my way. Punishment is good. Okay. But in some cases, it's not good. Okay. Say so because you can punish a child, but if the child say that's what he or she is going to do, no matter what you do, he or she will still do that. So okay. me, I think the best way is to call the child and talk to the child in a calm way. Okay. And advise the child about the consequences and effect of some activities he or she may indulge in. That is very excellent. That is very excellent. To four, your hand is up. To four, Savannah. Your hand is up. You raised up your hand. To four. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in my point of view, I think, Sam, I said, in my point of view, I think punishment is good, but in some cases, so it's no good because when a child is punished at times, the child gets to realize what he or she has done. Excellent. But some people abuse the punishment. Okay. When the child does something, when the child is not even punished, they punish the child unnecessarily. Okay, so then let me ask this question. Let me ask this question. How will you define your... Yes, sir, I have something to say. Hold on, hold on with your point. Hold on with your point. The, point, the question I'm asking now is, when we say punishment is, 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 has been abused, how will you define it? Or as, can you give me an example of abuse, abuse of punishment? Yes, Rosma, your hand is up. Okay. Mm -hmm. Caning the child to the extent that the child is wounded or not giving the child food for some days. Like, okay. yeah, something like that. Excellent. Excellent. So that is, that is how you see it. Anyway, Juliet, what are some of the abuse, abuse of punishment? How would, example, can you give an example? Say, like... For, for example, the recent news that a father even went to the extent of cutting his son's ears, mm -hmm. that, uh, which was a punishment. So that type of punishment is an abuse. It's an abuse. Thank you very much. Uh, I think all of you are going to say, check out Erica. Yes. Example. Tikata, you have the floor. You can speak. All right. She's not ready. Savannah, your hand is up. You can add up to what your friends have said. Um, some parents, when children do some things and they get too angry, mm -hmm. they abuse punishment. Some say in anything. The line is breaking. Come again. You see, like, some can take a blade and then just cut the child in. With a blade. Okay, thank you so much. I'm ever rejoice. 
how yeah. Yeah. Yes, I'm ever rejoice. Savannah, it's okay. Savannah, I got your point. It's okay. It's okay. I got your point. I got your point. Sure. When you use objects to hurt the child, it's, it's wrong. Yes. I, sir. Savannah, it's okay. We've heard you. Your line is breaking. We've heard you. I'm ever rejoice. Yes, you can speak. Sir. Mm -hmm. I think signing of good behavior is uh, um, an abusive punishment. Signing of what? My reason is Sign, signing of what? Signing of good, good, good behavior, born of good behavior. Mm -hmm. It's an abusive punishment in a way that it would affect the child in his or her future. It's an abuse. Are you to, okay? Okay, that is to you. All right, that is to you. But let me explain that in, in a jiffy. Now, when you talk about um, institution with rules and regulations, the rules are not there to affect or uh, inflict on the, on, the, on, the, on the student. No, the rules are there to guide and to protect you yourself. For instance, you are asked not to break bounds and you disobey the school rules, you broke bounds and let's say on the way going, you had an accident and let's say your leg or any part of, of, of your body get seriously injured. Now, we are on campus, we don't know you went out. Everybody knows you, everybody's on campus. They later realize that it has been reported that students is, is at Trafalgar uh, receiving treatment. We check our books. Nobody has taken an as yet. We went and found out that you were the one. Now, what do you think we should should be the message we give to your parents? Put yourself in our shoes. What do you think we should tell your parents? Wouldn't you, don't you think your parents would, would think we are irresponsible and we are not taking good care of you? And when you left campus, we couldn't realize that you are not on campus. At that moment, you are putting the school at the edge of what? A serious problem. So the 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 yet you signing to go home is an opportunity for you to go home. At the same time, it's also restricting you from leaving campus, believing that anything could happen to you. So when you break bounds and it it's in the code of conduct, you should sign a, a, a bond of good behavior. That law over there is not to hurt you, but to restrict you, to give you a restriction. And I have also witnessed on, over here on campus where students have misbehaved and they've been given, uh, uh, what do you call it, punishment to sign a bond of good behavior. And that changed their attitude because they realized that the next time they do another mistake, another problem, or cause another problem, that is also the intensity is more like another, uh, uh, more like signing of another bond of good behavior which will, could result the person to be dismissed, the person will stop doing that behavior. So I think in your way, you see it to be a punishment on the person's future. But don't forget that when the person signs a bond, the bond is to promise that I'm not going to do this and that again. So if the person completes school and completes on a good note, that bond is not going to affect him or her any longer. That bond will be taken out because you signed a bond of good behavior saying that you from today do the right thing and right things. And indeed, you, you did the right things till you completed. And that will take the bond from your file. Do you get a point? Yes, and I get it. All right, thank you so much. All right. Now let's quickly let's quickly move on with our studies. Let's quickly move on with our studies. <clears throat> Thank you so much for your time, your questions, your reasoning, your critical thinking, everything you said, I've really enjoyed them. Now let's move on to the next discussion. Our next discussion, we are going to look at the consequences of the sense of early sons. How did the uh, sense of early affected Israel and their own lives? Don't forget, God is a God of justice. In his love for humanity, there's also justice. 
God loves mankind. But one part of God that cannot be taken away is his just. When God's justice is taken away from, from his nature, then his love is, is, is not a true love. Because a true father has, yes, Savannah, your hand is up. My question is, is what if someone strikes you God and then the person is about to write, let's say, what's in, and only one week before the was in the person signed the bond? Would the bond affect the person after the, um, I mean, after paper or what? Yes, for that one, for instance, um, you sign a bond when you're about to complete school, that bond will affect you. It will affect you. You said? Yes, I said it will affect you. It will affect you. Can we continue? Yes, sir. All right. Now, remember when God sent the prophet to Eli, he gave him a message. And the message was to warn the children of Eli that if this behavior continues, he's going to punish them. Moreover, the leadership role as a priest given to Eli and his descendants will be taken away from him. And a serious calamity will befell the people of Israel. So I think Eli was supposed to be responsible enough to, as we've said, mentioned Eli, that he should have taken the leadership role he has given to these two young men from them. In other words, to restrict them from performing that role, but he didn't. He just rebuked them and used words. Words are very important. When somebody does something wrong or somebody is misbehaving, it's good we advise the person, counsel the person, teach the person, guide the person, hoping that the person changes. But when you try to convince the person or by persu persuading the person, the person refuses, there should be some kind of force. And if that force is failed to, to be applied, what happens next is that that behavior will continue and it will bring problem. Now, because of early son's misbehavior, God gave them into the hands of their enemies. That's the Philistines. And they had a battle with the, 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 the nation. That's the Philistines. And Israel was defeated. And the Ark of Covenant, which symbolizes God's presence with the people of Israel, was captured by the Philistines and it was sent to their country, in other words, their nation. And that is what we are going to discuss now. So in quotes, Israel's defeat and the capture of the Ark of Covenants. Let's read the notes. In a battle with the Philistines, Israel was routed and the army fled. About 4,000 Israelite food soldiers died, including the two sons of Eli, Hophni and Phinehas. The Philistines captured the Ark of God. Hophni and Phinehas died during the battle. When Eli heard that his two sons had died and the Ark of the Lord had been captured, he tumbled backward from his chair, broke his neck, and died. He was 90 years old. The wife of Phinehas was pregnant at the time when she also heard the news. She went into premature labor and delivered a baby. She died after a safe delivery, but before she died, she named the child Ichabod, meaning the glory of God had departed from Israel. As simple as that. 
So let me get into the notes a little bit so that we can continue with our next slide. During the battle, the people of Israel sent the Ark of Covenant to the battlefield. And that has been one way the Israelites are able to overpower their enemies during battles. When they send the Ark of Covenant, it symbolizes God's presence with them. And this time, when they went to the battle, taking the Ark of Covenant with them, God refused to go with them because the nation has sinned. The sons of Eli, Hophni, and Phinehas have caused the people of Israel to sin against God. And because of their sins, God allowed their enemies to conquer them. And during the war, Hophni and Phinehas died miserably and immediately the soldiers of israel realized that the battle is becoming so fierce and they had no strength to fight their enemies they left the ark of covenant there and the people of philistines took it and sent it to their nation now during the battle a benjamite a soldier who was from the tribe of Benjamin, was able to escape and he ran home to give, to inform the people of, in, in Israel what had happened on the battlefield. So immediately he purported the news to Eli. Eli, in other words, you can say he had a heart attack and he just fell down from his chair. His, down, his neck, his head just went down on the floor and he broke his neck. Instantly, he died. Frederick Pascal, your hand is up. Mr. Frederick, your hand is up. Frederick Pascal, your hand is up. Any problem? Do you have any question? All right, let's move on. Eli died at the age of 98 years old, meaning he advanced in age before he died. Another thing happened when the news reached the people of Israel. Phineas then had a wife. And at the time they were at the battle, she was pregnant. And immediately she also heard the news that the Israelites have lost the battle. His husband is dead, and his in-law, that is Eli, had also died. She also went into a premature labor and gave birth to a baby. And before she died, she named the child Ichabod. And the name Ichabod means the glory of God had departed from Israel. Now, I have about four objective questions that I have seen in the WASI for about five or six times reoccurring. One of the past question asked you to identify the sons of Eli. So they said the question was stated in, in, the, in the, for example, the two sons of Eli were then we'll give you Hophni and another name. Hophni and Phinehas. Phinehas and a different name. And two other different names to test your, 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 your what do you call it? To test you, simply put. So you should always keep in mind that the two sons of Eli were Hophni and Phinehas. And I don't want you to forget the two sons of Eli were Hufnai and Phinehas. And as I said, this has reoccurred many times in the objective. Two, at what age did Eli die? He died at the age of 98 years old. Another past question, this one has repeated about two times. So take notice 
of it. Thirdly, the name Ichabod. This has also occurred about four times in the past questions. The meaning of Ichabod. And it means the glory has departed. Simply put, in other words, the glory of God had departed from Israel. So that's some observations I've made in the past questions, which I want you to also take notice because it is a likely examination question. Thank you for your attention. Let's move on. But before that, if you have any question, you can please ask. Is there anyone here with a question? Okay. Sir. Yes. Sir. 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 Please, what's the name? What's the name of uh, Finney? Sir, please, what's the name of Finney Hassan's wife? Not recorded, but you can check it. You can check it. Okay. You can check it. It, it hasn't come to the past question, and the wife's name is not a focus. Of the study, so <clears throat> there's no way they will ask you the name of Phineas' wife. Okay. But you remember we studied Deborah, Deborah's husband, Lapidoth. Lapidoth is a past question. That is why when you, if you pay attention to the notes, I highlighted it and I <clears throat> bolded the, the font. So put that also in mind. Lapidoth was the husband of Deborah. So the ones, the yes, name that the names that are required, I will tell you. Okay. Yes. yes All right. Sir. Now let's move on to talk about ways in which parents can fulfill their parental obligations to their children. Ways in which parents can fulfill their parental obligations to their children. Now I will just go back and ask you to mention one each. Each of you, are, you are going to talk one after the other. I mention your name, then you mention one obligation or one um, role that your parents should play in your life. Okay, I'm about rejoice. What role? Providing your material needs. The parents should provide you your material needs. So it's not a boyfriend who's supposed to provide material needs, right? Yes, sir. All right, so boyfriends don't. So if you're a child, you have parents, and your parents are there, you should seek your needs from them. Don't allow any boy to influence you that I'll give you this and that. Or maybe what your parents are giving to you uh, is not enough, so I can, I can get you more. No, be content with what your parents are able to provide for you, your material needs. So parents are supposed to provide material needs for their children. Example, food, clothes, shelter, Etc. Everesta, your hand is up. Parents should be able to pay their school their children's school fees. Okay, they should give their children quality education. That is excellent. Rosemond. Say. Yes, my dear. They should make sure they follow the right path. They should make sure they follow the right path, meaning that parents should check the moral conduct or inculcate moral values in their children. That is excellent. Precious. Sir, provision of economic support. Excellent. Providing the children with economic support, money, and other staffs. That is excellent. Priscilla. Preventing the child from committing sins. Okay, preventing the child from committing Saints, that is excellent. Sika Dochi, your hand is up. Yeah, they should they should be positive role models. They should be positive role models. That is excellent. Peggy. Provision of psychological or emotional needs. Provision of psychological or emotional needs. That is excellent. And when you say psychological needs, Peggy, can you please explain? Uh, 
um, parents should be able to talk to their children. Maybe mm-hmm. if they have problems, they should be able to confine in their parents so that they can tell them anything that's wrong. That is excellent. That is excellent. That's excellent. Yes, God your grace. Okay, showing them love and affection. Showing them love and affection. That is excellent. Perfect. So parents should instill good virtues of the society in their children. That is excellent. I like the point. I'm ever rejoice. So can you say that parents should teach their words a good moral virtues? That is perfect. That is excellent answer you just gave. Surprisingly, the guys are not talking. Bye. Your point, I want you to ma- mention one rule or one obligation of your parents. Bye. Yeah. They should teach their children the right morals to live a good life in their so- society. All right, Dennis. Dennis. Sylvester. Sylvester, can you mention one obligation of parents? Sir, sir. Yep. They shouldn't shrink their responsibilities. They shouldn't shrink. We are, we are looking at the what they should do. So what are they supposed to do? We are looking at the do's, not the, not the don'ts. Mm-hmm. So philos. Okay, so proper nurturing. Proper nurturing. That is excellent. William. Sir, advising them whenever they do wrong. Advising them whenever they, they do wrong. All right, let's go to the notes. Let's go to the notes. All right. One, providing children material needs like food, clothing, and shelter. Somebody said it, that is excellent. Two, satisfying their emotional and psychological needs like exhibiting love to them. Three, ensuring that they are well educated according to their ability. Four, ensuring that they are provided with adequate health care. Five, where there is not enough money, making sure that they are enrolled with national health insurance, which is very important. Most parents don't want to do that. If you know there's not enough money in the house, to send a child to the hospital whenever he or she is sick, quickly en- enroll the child with the National Health Insurance Scheme so that in case the child falls sick, you can rely on that. Now, give the children a good moral and religious education, ensuring that the child grows with good moral values. Lastly, which is not my last point, you can add millions of obligations to what we are studying, preventing the child from committing sin. So everything that you guys said are correct. And that is a term up for you. Let's quickly look at our next focus. The effect of bad parenting. Let me go back. Now a question to you. What are some of the effects of bad parenting on a child? If parents are not able to take care of that. Yes, Evarista. Please, let's take it one after the other. When I call you, then you speak. Evarista, your point again. Say. Okay. Mm-hmm. Children become trans. 
children become truants. That is excellent. Yes, um, Rosemond. Say. Mm -hmm. They are uh, easily influenced by their uh, peers. They are easily influenced by their peers. That's good. Sika. Say. Mm -hmm. School dropouts. They become school dropouts. Yes. Any other question? They Hello, become, great. They become irresponsible. The children grow up and become irresponsible. Yeah, Carlo Grace, your hand was up. I'm ever precious. Rejoice, I'm ever, I'm ever rejoice, yes. They're prostitutes. They become, some become wayward. Example, prostitutes, drug addicts, etc. Thank you so much for your view. Now let's look at what I have here in my notes. Effect of bad parenting. Someone hand this up. Let me quickly check. But the hand again is down. Okay, let's move on. Effect of bad Sir, parenting. Please, I can hear you. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Hello? Sir? Can you all hear me now? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right, let's move on. So we are now looking at effects of bad parenting. You have given me some of if of the effects of bad parenting. Now let's look at what I have here in my notes. One, the children become truants, skipping school, etc. Two, the children end up in the streets. They become kubolos. Three, some may become drug addicts. Five, the girls become pregnant in their teens, making the boys become premature fathers. Six, it may lead to early death of the children. Also, it tarnishes the image of the family. In other words, we can say the family loses its credibility. Again, loss of respect for the parents. That particular child, the parents will lose what? Respect from people, of people. Last but not the least, children become disrespectful. In other words, become nuisance, nuisance in what? In the community. So these are some of the effects of bad parenting. This gives us the big knowledge that parenting is very, very important. When your parents fail to bring you up well, you become a problem to the family, you become the problem to your community, you become a problem to the nation, and you become a problem to the whole world. That is the side of parents we are discussing. But for parents to have to become successful in their parenting, you children must also have the readiness to be guided, to be taught, to be controlled, to be counseled, and to also be punished when you do something wrong. So if you really want your parent to become successful in their parenting, if you don't want your parent to become bad parents in the spectacles of the society, then it is very, very important for you children to also humble yourselves and pay attention to the instructions of your parents. 
I keep telling you, if you really want to succeed on this earth we are living on, you must have the spirit of humility. Somebody who can be taught, somebody who can be guided, somebody who can be counseled, and allow yourself to be punished when you do something wrong. Some of you, you have grown some kind of ideas about life, which you may think it is the best ideas of life. But frankly speaking, your parents know much than you do. When we talk about, when we talk about experience in life, your parents have experience in life than you do. I think I've said this before. What your parents will lie on the floor and they will see afar. If you climb Mount Nafajato or Mount Nadaklu, you will never see it. Why? Because experience is the best teacher. Your parents have experienced a lot of things and they are the best people to guide you to make the right decisions, guide you to go the, the right direction. So we are looking at parental responsibility. It is their responsibility to groom you, nurture you, make you become a good citizen who is going to affect the entire world positively. But for them to become successful, you must also play your role as a child. If you refuse to play your, child, your, your role as a child, what you do is that you put your parents, your parents or you put your parents in, in, into, uh, into disgrace, like it happened to Ellie. Ellie became priest and has, he has served God for so many years. But because of his children's misbehavior, at the end of the day, look at how Ellie died. There are some parents today who die very young. There are some parents today who, because of their children's misbehavior, they are so truant, they are so stubborn to the extent that the parent becomes pressured, or in other words, they become depressed. And when parents become depressed, it can kill them. So those of you, those of you who want your parent to die, if you are living, um, what do you call it, a trans life in the house, you are not humble, you are abusing your right in the house, you don't listen to instructions, then you are trying to dig your parents' grave. And that is very evil. If your parents, a, a parent, if any of your parents would die because of you, that is really, really, really evil. Ellie died because of his children's misbehavior. And his children also died because of their misbehavior. That gives us the notion that parents are very important. Those of you who are obeying your parents and you are paying attention to instructions and you are doing your best in the house, continue doing that. Those of you who are not doing so, I'll use this platform to advise you be very careful because if you have parents, mm, if you have parents, you are blessed. You talk to people who have lost both parents and how life becomes difficult for them. There will come, there will come, there will come a time that you want somebody beside you, somebody who is going to give you some kind of moral, uh, uh, morale or someone who's going to listen to you and you wish your mom or your dad is alive or you wish your mom or dad is, is, is there for you to consult them. Yes, your hand is up, my dear. Thanks. Mm -hmm. But if you are trying your best to go according to whatever they say, but they don't appreciate you, what do you do? Okay, good. Thank you so much for your question. This means that parents must also be educated when it comes to parenting, because punishing a child is not the motivation that I would uh, um, 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 give to parents. I will also consider what we call reward or positive reinforcement. When a child does something good in the house or tries the best to be disciplined and obeys instruction out, parents must also show appreciation. They must also reward the child. 
even sometimes it is not the material things you give to the child as a reward. You calling the child to sit beside you and telling the child, I'm happy you did this for me. God bless you. Or you even receiving a tap at your back. Oh, thank you so much for what you've done. That alone will give the child that joy. That will give that child that positive reinforcement. The child will be like, I want to do it again. I did this and my parents were happy. I want to do it again. So the, it is very important for parents to also note that. But how can I co co consult your parents on this? You can also do that by consulting your parents. Maybe if you're in good terms with your parents, you can just go to your mom or any of your, your parents and talk to, 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 to him or her. The daddy, you asked me to wash your car and I've been washing your car all this while. Yes, I know you have been taking care of me as your responsibility and I appreciate what you have been doing, paying my fees and taking care of me. But daddy, I want you to also sometimes appreciate the fact that I've been washing your cars for you, that you know that I'm the best car washer. You see, talk to, you talk to your daddy in such a way that your daddy will also say, like, oh, okay, it can even create kind of humor. And they can also practice it and you'll also be happy. So therefore, thank you for your question. Parents must also reward their children when they do the right things. All right, let's quickly look at our last two slides and then we move on. We've discussed the um, effects of bad parents. Let's look at application virtues, moral lessons, lessons that can be derived from the lesson we've just um, treated. One, one, parents should inculcate into their children the fear of God. They can do that, for example, having Bible studies, devotion, prayers, counseling and guidance, etc. Two, parents should train children to acquire good moral values. Three, they should be role models. If your parent wants you to live to a certain standard, they must set the pace for you. They must set that standard themselves. If parents are not role models, you will find it difficult to become a good person. For instance, you are living in a, in, a, in a house where there's no good relationship between you and your parents. Um, they do so, your parents fight and do kind of things. You end up become, growing up and marrying, you'll be fighting your wife or you'll be fighting your, your, your husband. So parents must be role models. And they are role Modeling should be something that should be very important to them. Parents should be role models. Again, disobedience to the Lord's commandment leads to severe punishment. Also, parents should be stern on children when they go astray. They should not be afraid to reprimand their children. There are some parents, they don't reprimand their children. In other words, they don't punish their children. They don't do anything. They are not standing on their children. When the, children. when the child goes wrong or goes astray, it is the parent's responsibility to be standing on the child and let the child understand that what you've done is wrong. And if there is any appropriate punishment, that punishment should be given to the child. The reason why people don't like sun sunrise, especially most students, when they come here, they don't like sunrise, is that we are standing on you. We will not allow you to detect for us. We will not allow you to do what you want to do. When, yes. we know that, when, we, when we know that what you want to do can affect you in the future, we will not allow you. We will be standing on you. And let me tell you something. The good news is that students who have gone through sunrise, going through the mails with that discipline and strict observation, they complete school and they come back and they will give us accolades. They will thank us. They'll give, us, they'll give us that praise. Oh, say, if not because of you. Oh, say, if not because of this. If not because you punished me. The other time you called me to your office and you spoke to me. If not because of that, I wouldn't go, get to where I am today. So at, at a point, you children, you think when parents are stern, are disciplined, you think they are worrying you. They are disturbing you. They are not disturbing you. They are giving you the map to your future. 
if your parents are illegitimate, if you're having legitimate for parents, if, if your parents don't punish you, they don't, they're not stand on you, it means you are an illegitimate child, as the Bible teaches. So as a child, you should also allow yourself to be punished. It's very important. The last one, then I think you can take the rest of the notes in the Google Classroom. They should take interest in the affairs of their children. Parents must take serious interest in, their, in the affairs of their children. Example, relationships, hobbies, education, and aspirations. What, whoever your friend is, your parents should know who your friends are. If your parents, if your parents don't know who your friends are, and your friends are giving you wrong information about life, it's going to affect you. So it's going to be a, a, a battle. What your parents say and what your parents, your parents say and what your friends also say. Do you get a point? So there's, there are some of you, you are confused. You don't want, it's like, should I listen to my parents or should I listen to my friend? So parents must be very interested in the relationships of their, what, of their children. If it's a boy, they should know. If it's a girl, they should know. Else, if you have a bad friend, don't forget, bad company corrupts what? Good morals. I've seen it before many times. Your hobbies. Maybe you like playing football. Your parents should be interested that you play football. And sometimes if you are, going to, you are even in a team in your, in your area and you're going to play football match, your parents should come and sit down and watch you play and support your hobbies. But in, in Africa here, so far as they say you go to school, you go to school. Yes, yeah, school is good. But if you want to, you are also playing football, you are good at football and you, you are joining a team. Sometimes you have to sneak from the house, go and play the football and come back without telling your parents. And when you come, they'll punish you. But no, when you watch this uh, um, Western world, Parent. When a child is a football player, a basketball player, they will support the child to go and play the basketball. So parents should be interested in the hobbies because if, you, if, a, if a parent is interested in the hobbies of the, of the child, it gives the child some kind of morale to, to better what his skills and talents, education and then aspiration. Then moreover, they should out reward and encourage good behavior. When a child does something right in the house, it is the parent's obligation. It is the, the parent, uh, um, uh, what do you call it, duty, to reward a child and encourage a good behavior. Oh, what, you, Rosemont, you've done. Thank you so much. I really like that. Continue. I love you. Some of you, you don't even hear I love you from your parents. So when a boy or a girl tells you he or she loves you, you go crazy. Oh, I'm in love. I'm in love. I'm in love. That is stop it. It's because majority of you don't hear I love you from your parents. You don't hear I love you from your parents. But parents should, 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 should let you know that they love you. The parents should know that they love you. Okay? Some of you, you have, since you, were, you, were, you grew up, you have not received a hug from your, your daddy or your mommy before. They've not even hugged you before. When you see them, you see Jata, you see Lion. When, your parents, when you see your parents uh, coming to the house, maybe your daddy comes to the house and he, he haunts his car. Pepin, all of you, you just run. Everybody go and take book. If you, you know, sometimes even some of your parents, your mother will even run and go and sit quietly when your daddy is coming to the house. <laughs> no, parents should not be the jatai in the house. They should be jatai and at the same time the sheep in the house. So parents should reward good behavior. Lastly, but not the least, last but not the least, parents should be good friends with the awards. And that is something that I like about um, our administrator. You know how you see how he he's very friendly with the children, even the child here, very friendly. When the child was playing for the school, the table tennis, he came there to see the child play, and that is that is a sign of what a father who is interested in the world, in the success of world of the child. And I I, lo I really love that. I really love that. So that's an example I can give you. I don't know. That's an example I know that you also know. So parents should be good friends with their world. If you are not a friend. With your parents, please today find a way of becoming a friend to your, your mother or your, your dad. Some of you, because of your uh, what do you call it? Uh, uh, <laughs> some of you, you, some of you, your tea is in the house. Uh, so, because of that, you can't even get closer to your parents. So, children, please. Now, these are sample questions you can be tested on. Sample questions you can be tested on. And these questions have appeared in the WASI several times. 
You have question one there. Yes, I'm about to rejoice, my dear. For a parent to trust on to trust his or her child. Your question again, please. To trust so much in his or her son. Is it good or small? Stop it. Rejoice, I'm listening, please. I remember rejoice, I'm listening. So I'm asking you if it is good for a parent to trust on his or like trust the world. Yes. Confidence in God. Say. Yes, I can I heard you, I heard you, I heard you. I'm answering your question. I heard you. I heard you, so I'm answering. Parents must have confidence in their children. It's very important. I will not I will not call it, I will not call it trust. I'll call it confidence. Your parents should have confidence in you. It is very important parents should have confidence in their what? In their children. Yes, Rosemond. Say, mm -hmm. please, I want to add. So, does that mean that uh, Ellie was not responsible? Okay. From the Bible perspective, he failed as a parent at the end of his ministry as a pastor, or in other words, as a priest. Because his responsibility in the house was to raise the children to become God-fearing and also perform their roles as priests in the temple of God with dignity. But he failed. He failed. So with that, we say that he wasn't responsible. Parenting-wise, he wasn't re responsible. All right, thank you so much for your attention. It is time. We will end our class here. God willing, next week, you are writing your... Uh, class work and class test, yes. Will you send the work to them? I'm going to do exactly that. Okay, and that. the notes. I'm doing exactly that, my dear. I'll do that. All of yes. you, should, all of you should go to the Google Classroom, get the notes, prepare yourself for next week. You'll be writing class work, and I'll be giving you also an assignment to present to me. So please make sure you always check your Google Classroom. Thank you so much for your time. Have a wonderful weekend. God bless you. Till we meet again. Bye bye. Love you all. Bye. 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 Okay, sir. Bye. Thank you, sir. Good day. You too. Bye bye.